one in front of you who's really tall and big and stuff, if you want to just gently tap them on the shoulder to remind them to maybe they could kneel down, that'd be great. We want to make sure everyone can see as best as possible. Um, I'm not going to take up too much of our time because I'm sure you're not here to listen to Herbie talk. You're here to listen to Adam Savage talk. Yeah, thanks, thanks guys. I really appreciate that. Um, so it's been a really fantastic week. I'm not going to go into the details because that guy's going to do it. But I just wanted to say thank you on behalf of the Exploratorium to Adam Savage for coming out this week and building this stuff with us. It's been fantastic, and I'm really excited that he's here, and I'm really excited that you're all here. And without further ado, here he is. Hello! Hello. Thank you guys for... This isn't freezing cold anywhere in the world, by the way. <laughs> Only San Franciscans would be debilitated by this temperature. Um, so, yeah, I have just had this experience of spending three days building live in front of a crowd, many of you who stood here for hours and hours and hours. Um, I really, I didn't know what to expect when I embarked upon this. I actually don't love it being watched while I solve problems. But I move towards the things that I fear, and that was the case here. Um, I will tell you that I did a lot of pre-prep of this device before I showed up. Um, my, my shop assistant, Aaron, welded uh, 24 triangles, tons of bushings. He made me Teflon washers because apparently you can't buy those. Uh, and so we showed up with enough that I thought that I could probably put this together in a few hours. Um, and then <laughs> it ended up in a grueling slog where we, I really wasn't sure until this afternoon that it was going to work at all. And then as I was driving home, actually specifically Joey, my tested cameraman, this is Adam, but Joey was filming me this last three days. Joey was like delighted and surprised that it worked. <laughs> and I thought, that's a familiar feeling. Oh, right. I get the same thing from my Mythbusters cameraman. So I realized that what I ended up doing here is the same thing I've been doing for 15 years, which is biting off a little more than I can chew, building something complicated while people watch, having it not work for a huge portion of the time, and then getting it to work at the last minute. Um, I, 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 I want to talk about what went wrong, because I put this whole thing together, and boy, it was a, a lesson in how distributed the system is. I knew that, um, but also how critical all the measurements were. And there was a gentleman who was standing over here for much of the time. Where is he? Where is the... Yes, sir. Thank you so much. What is your name? Ken. Ken Fujimoto. Um, Ken was giving ideas to, to, to Herbie here about what was going wrong with my machine. And I was very specific that I wanted to do the problem solving on my own. That's kind of the way I like to build. And so I wasn't going to have this be a collaborative process because that's a Pandora's box. I'm not sure what it's going to be like. But I did. The word got back to me that Ken had said that the central geometry of the strong base, which is um, these two pivots that are the main pivots for the legs and this central pivot where the camshaft goes, that that relationship was wrong. And I thought, mm, I don't think that it's wrong because it shouldn't make much of a difference. And I thought about it and thought about it and thought about it. And I kept on trying to solve the other problems, eliminate the other variables. And then at 4.30 this, mor this previous morning, I woke with a start and thought, oh, look at the original measurements. I had transferred them carefully into my notebook, all but one. And the one that I hadn't transferred was the fact that these three, uh, these three points are not on a line. They actually form a triangle. And that I wanted my triangle, that my, my central crankshaft pivot to be three and a half inches above the line. So then I was up until five trying to figure out the best way to do it. And I cut this thing up in my head about a million different ways before realizing, dummy, there are eight uprights. All I need to do is measure three and a half inches on those, cut each one, and then I used a bunch of tie straps to really force the geometry into something new. Um, which for me is, I, you know, I, I recognize that it, I could have made it go easier by getting it right on the first try. <laughs> but I think that's a, a, it's a generally my lesson in life. Um, I want to make this work for you, and then I would love to take some questions from the audience. But uh, if you'll indulge me, we'll have the inaugural official trip of my strong bike, I guess, is what we call this. All right. Here's hoping that nothing snaps on the way. And we, we discovered today that I need to be facing downhill. Oh, hey, these bike packs hurt. 
Alright, here we go. Come on, baby. Yes! Yeah! Oh! Don't snap. There we go! Yeah! Whoa. We gotta build some momentum. That's it! Yeah. Yeah. Okay, here we go. I'm crashing into the fence. That's what's happening. There we go. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Oh. And as Teo does, Sisyphean, I'm going to push it back into the light. Oh, he's lost a shoe. Several. <laughs> uh, does anyone have any questions? <laughs> the crankshaft. Yes, there is. A, there is totally a general principle. the The, the question is, uh, what is the relationship of the crankshaft's offset? Um, and it's very simple. It's a, the, the the cranks are each set offset 120 degrees to their neighbor. So that three of them make a full revolution. As to how the two sides relate to each other, um, Norm went inside yesterday to look at Teo's, and it, there doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason to how he's connected the two sides. It's all over the place. Uh, and I, in fact, made mine not bilaterally symmetrical, but identical, which luckily didn't bone me. Um, how about over here? Yes. Uh, I did tell him, so the question was, did I talk to Teo about what I was going to build? I did. He came to my shop for a couple of hours. Um, he's a delightful, wonderful, inquisitive, amazing, avuncular man. Um, and I was worried that steel was somehow violating a central idea. Um, I've been saying this for the last couple of days, but I love that he uses PVC. It's such a, a, a terrible material for mechanical construction. <laughs> And so, I mean, the bots, I used to, one of my first jobs here in San Francisco in the early 90s was working for Chico McMurtry of Morphic Robot Works. Old timers will remember the early machine art community in San Francisco in the 90s. And Chico's robots were always a triumph of Chico's ambition over his lack of engineering skills. Uh, and, and I'm not saying Teo lacks engineering skills, but each one of his strong bases is sort of a triumph of his, of his will over the material itself, and I like that. I chose steel specifically because I was, uh, it's, a, it's a more forgiving material for me. Uh, and Teo gave me total permission. He said, yeah, I have cheated on the PVC and used steel in the past. <laughs> um, how about over here? Yes, in the hat. Did I consider a more standard bicycle construction? I did, except that someone's built one of those. Um, I was really hoping to get on top of this, but I just, I just don't feel like, I, once I built it, I didn't feel like it was gonna, wow, wait a second. Hold on. I don't, I don't. <laughs> oh, it's adult night. There are no children here. Oh, that is so awesome. Oh my god, I had no idea this would work. <laughs> oh, that is, I'm, wow. <laughs> you see how seat of pants this all really is. What people are, people meet me and they're like, well, you are exactly what I expected. <laughs> Oh, um, how about, yes. Who came up with the shoes? I did. Um, I have not seen shoes, and of course, if you're going to put shoes on anything, it has to be red Converse high tops. Um, and uh, my friend Tom Sachs designs stuff with Nike, and he reached out to his contact at Nike. I literally mentioned it to him, and two days later, 12 pairs of shoes showed up. So we have destroyed, yeah, 12 shoes. Uh, Six pairs of shoes showed up. Seven.